Registration data has just been released for electric vehicle sales in the US. And frankly, the numbers are a little alarming. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Great to see you here on the channel. Welcome to all those new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Great to see you here on the channel. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys really do make this channel possible. Without you, we wouldn't be here. Thank you very much for helping us out. By the way, I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon account. In 2020, Tesla had 79% of the US electric vehicle market. 79%. That is insane. You know, what is actually more insane, even though it may not appear so at face value, is that Tesla had 70% last year. So they lost 9% market share, which you might say, well, they lost 9% market share. But... Need I remind you, legacy auto fans, last year was meant to be the year when Tesla was going to get blown out of the water and lose all their market share. And somehow they went from 79% to 70%. In spite of the fact that there are now quite a lot of different electric vehicles on the market in the US, Tesla still holds 70% of the entire market. And I don't think those numbers are going to change this year. To be frank, really, can they change this year? Are any other automakers going to start releasing the kinds of EVs that Tesla are this year. I mean, look, look, they have a factory, right? A gigafactory where they'll be producing vehicles incredibly efficiently. A gigafactory, which is 1.2 kilometers long and 400 meters wide, and is probably the most efficient electric vehicle factory on the face of the planet Earth. You can't realistically think Tesla's going to lose much market share this year. If any, they may even increase it. That, my friends, is really scary. But realistically, Tesla do deserve this. They took the risk when others didn't. Let's have a look at the actual electric vehicle sales per state in America to see how different states compare against each other. But first, who was in second place last year? Well, somehow, I don't know how, somehow Nissan was in second with 8.5%. And then in third place, miraculously, Chevy or Chevrolet, General Motors had 7.15%. And in fourth place, disappointingly, was Ford with 2.3%. Fifth place, Volkswagen with 2.2%. And sixth place, Audi 1.6%. Then we've got Hyundai next with 1.45%. And then Kia with 1.3%. Now, you've got to say, Hyundai and Kia, they get a lot of marketing from the press in the United States, right? They do. They're all over the press. Oh, the, the EV6 is great. It is. Ionic 5 is amazing. It is. This is like the kind of thing you see on websites frequently, which is pretty remarkable considering they only make up, what, 2.5% of all electric vehicle sales in the US. And it proves my point here on the channel. And I've been criticized for this on the channel by some of you. I know I have. I've seen the comments. But it proves my point. This is evidence to my point. They're not making them. They're not. 2.4% of all electric car sales in the US were from Hyundai and Kia together. They've got brilliant cars. And they're not making them. Let's have a look at the states. Well, Tesla is leading EV sales in every single state, except surprisingly in one, and that is Alaska, where they have yet to open a service center, but they've recently launched their first supercharger in the state. If you have a look at this map here from Experian, you can see that Tesla absolutely dominates the market in California with 35.3% share of all vehicle sales, period. That's including internal combustion engine vehicles. That's insane. Absolutely. Californians, kudos to you. What an impressive result. That's amazing. Second, after California, was Florida with 7.9%. So you can see a million miles behind. What a huge difference, first and second places. Then in third place, really surprising to me is Texas with 6%. It's going to be fascinating to see what happens this year with obviously the Gigafactory being in Texas. I think a lot more Texans will be thinking, you know what, maybe I'll give Tesla a try. A lot of marketing in Texas and a lot of people, I mean, a lot of Texans will be working either for Tesla or for a company that will be supplying Tesla, going to be providing a lot of jobs for Texas, for the state. A lot of, you know, there's a lot of talk about Tesla now in Texas. So it's really interesting to see they were already in third place last year. That means good chance they actually overtake Florida this year, I think. Now, next, we can see the so-called progressive state of New York with only 4.6%. Guys, yeah, you're not doing so good. 4.6% compared to California with 35.3%. You've got to have to up your game there, boys. 
We all think General Motors, Ford, Volkswagen are going to ramp up sales in the US this year. But for them to have any chance whatsoever, they're going to have to do a lot of hard work because EV adoption rate in the US is still pretty piss poor. And there's one reason for that. It's not Tesla's fault. It's the fault of all these other car companies that were meant to crush the market last year with their onslaught of EVs and did almost nothing. Tesla isn't going to slow down, like I said. They are expanding production at Fremont this year, which people are not really talking about, by the way, and of course, starting production at the Gigafactory in Texas. Some additional production will be exported, but Tesla will still grow in the US. And I actually think their exports will decrease from America this year. Obviously, they're exporting some of their vehicles out of America this year. Model X and the Model S, of course, that's going to stay the same in terms of that, well, similar, that in terms of their exports, because those cars are not made anywhere else. However, if you think about it, the fact that China will be doubling their output, the fact that we're going to see all this output coming out of Germany, suggests to me it's more likely that Tesla's exports from America will potentially decrease this year. So that means all those additional vehicles being made in the US, at Texas and in California, at Fremont, will likely go to Americans. The interesting thing is here, right, that thanks to this massive surge in fuel prices, we're actually seeing electric vehicle orders surge. And that's the key reason why Tesla keeps on up upping their prices. Sorry, I know many of you there out there believe this kind of media nonsense, which is completely fabricated. There's no truth or mathematics behind it whatsoever that, oh, the nickel price has gone up. Oh, that's the reason we should increase the price of LFP batteries. They don't have any LFP in them. I've received messages from some of you saying, oh, that's the reason for them. There's, LFP batteries prices have increased. There's nothing to, there's no reason for those batteries to increase. It's just because there's more demand. Everyone's copying each other, right? Oh, the excuse is inflation. Well, there's all kinds of reasons. You know what I think they should just do? Tesla just should just say, you know what? We increase the price because we can, because we've now got a year's worth of pre-order. So we're upping the price. So pay it or don't. That, in my view, is the key driver for the price increases. Not metal increases, which I'm sure increased maybe a little bit. But that's not the key driver for the price increase. The key driver is the massive demand that they have. You know, it is actually possible that any other car maker from Legacy Auto could be in this current position that Tesla are in. They definitely chose not to be. Tesla clearly took the risk, and it was a big risk. They made massive investments amidst many naysayers saying electric cars were golf carts. And now they're reaping the share of rewards from those investments. Now, obviously, the auto market is way too large to say that Tesla's going to retain 70% market share ongoing. But maybe the correct analogy could be like an Apple iPhone type market share. Maybe they retain around 40% market share. Because to be honest, that first mover advantage of being the first mover brand, being perceived as the electric car brand, does have a fair bit of kudos for a lot of people. And in addition to that, right now, no one has gone far back enough on the supply chain to secure enough batteries to catch up with Tesla anytime soon. You can look at that, just have a look at GM and, and Ford. Look, they've got one battery supplier each, basically. If you go outside of China, they're just dealing with one battery company. And that, to me, is fairly problematic. In addition to that, here is the best legacy auto company in position to compete with Tesla has just said, the CEO just said, they can't compete until their factory in Wolfsburg is complete. When's that going to be complete? 2025? We're looking at least three years away, maybe four, before even the best place company can start to compete with Tesla. That, my friends, is one of the key reasons why I own the stock. Let me know if you own it or you don't, or what you think is going to happen this year with Tesla in the US. That's my key question, and that's what I'm fascinated to see. What will be their sales in the US this year? And do you or don't you own the stock? If you do or you don't, let me know why.